Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Bond Manor. And today is another thrilling epic comic book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'll talk about a Marvel epic collection, usually. And Steve Donahue at his channel will talk about that same Marvel epic collection, usually. And today, I actually, I actually have a book that's not in epic comic book form. It should be, but it isn't. But because it's October, the spookiest time of the year, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about Marvel's The Tomb of Dracula. Uh, Tomb of Dracula uh, is probably the greatest horror comic book uh, from the 70s. In fact, I'm almost positive that it is. Uh, there, are, there are a couple others that are in the running, definitely. But I think this is probably the best, uh, The Tomb of Dracula. Um, it can be a little tricky to pick up now. There is this, I'm gonna put a picture right up there because I don't have a physical copy of this, which is the uh, complete collection. Uh, that's the Complete Collection Volume 1. There are a few Complete Collections of the Tomb of Dracula out now. Uh, and it's really hard to get. Uh, but you can get this and uh, a bunch of others digitally. Uh, so if you don't mind reading digital comics, you can get the, higher, the entire series of Tomb of Dracula and read them that way. That might be the only way you can read some of these uh, those early issues unless you were lucky enough to get them or get these complete collections while they were out. Uh, I think number two, three, and four may be out now, and I think you can still get those pretty easy. The first complete collection, I last time I checked, was pretty expensive. And that, that's the same that going for uh, this. This is Tomb of Dracula uh, Omnibus. This is the first Omnibus of Tomb of Dracula. This collects Tomb of Dracula uh, 1 through 31. Werewolf by Night, number 15. Giant Size Chillers, number one. And Giant Size Dracula, numbers two and four. Because I guess they're just taking over for Giant Size Chillers. So yeah, Tomb of Dracula. I remember these Dracula comics very clearly from when I was a kid. Um, I got most of the issues that were from the later half of the run though. I was never able to get my hands on the earlier uh, issues of this. So I didn't actually read the first several issues of this until I was in my early 30s. And the way I read them was with this. This came out in 2004, I believe. This is the essential, the Tomb of Dracula. And these essential vol volumes from Marvel, very cheaply produced very, very cheaply, uh, all in glorious black and white. My color vision is pretty much non-existent anyway, so it didn't bother me. But uh, yeah, these were very cheaply produced on newsprint, uh, but that is how I read the initial few issues. And you know what? If anybody looks good in the old way, it's Gene Colan and his artwork. Uh, just fantastic artwork. So, once upon a time, the comic books had something called the Comics Code Authority. It was a little box that looked just like that, that was on every single comic book. And the Comics Code was author Authority was created after the comic book scare of the 1950s, uh, which is a dismal period in comic book history that I will not bore you with, but suddenly comic books decided to self-censor censor themselves. There was a couple of reasons for this. One of them was to put EC Comics out of business, which was the greatest comic book company ever, and they made the best comic books. But that, like I said, that's another story. But one of the things in there is that you couldn't do anything scary in comics. Finally, eventually, they loosened up, and you can have things like vampires back in comics again, and werewolves and all that fun stuff. In the 70s, finally, that happened. 
So Marvel right away came out with a Dracula comic book, a werewolf comic book, a Frankenstein comic book. The Dracula run was the best, uh, highest quality, the Dracula run. Uh, every issue of this, every single issue of this, not including the giant size stuff, was illustrated by Gene Colan. An entire run, and I think there were 70 issues of this, if I'm remembering right. And the entire run was all illustrated by one artist, which is remarkable. That never happens. But it happened with this book. And it was because Gene Colan really, really, really wanted to draw this. When he heard this book was being considered, he really lobbied to do it. And he did a... I don't know if they have it reprinted in here or not. They might. He did like a tryout uh, illustration, which he, yeah, here it is. To get Stan to give him the job, he drew this picture of Dracula right there, where he did this character study of Dracula. He based his Dracula, Gene Colan did, on the actor Jack Palance because he thought that he would make a really cool Dracula. And boy, does he. Stan Lee took one look at this and said, you have the job. Thank goodness he did, because he is magnificent. The artwork in this is great. The writing doesn't get great. Well, it was good. It was good. It was good the whole way. I liked the first issue quite a bit. But the writing doesn't really start to solidify until Marv Wolfman gets on it. The first few issues of this, there's like two issues by, who does the first two issues? Let me see, because it's done by a bunch of different people in the first six issues, I think. Gary Conway did the first couple issues. Uh, this is the first issue of Dracula, and the first few issues are all being written by different people. Gardner Fox did a couple issues. But Marv Wolfman finally got on board, I think, with issue seven. And from then on, all the way through the run, it was great. It was a, it was a really consistent, brilliantly done comic book. Uh, the artwork is amazing. Uh, Gene Colan was an incredible artist because he could do things that were both realistic and kind of surrealistic. I mean, just kind of very strange and yet at the same time uh, looked like it existed in the real world. His characters all looked like real people. <laughs> Get Dracula showing up there. Uh, so everybody had a very distinct look. I mean, Every character in this book, they, they have a consistent look through the entire time that they're on the book. Uh, everybody looks different. Everybody uh, has an individuality to them. They all look like real people. Uh, and yet, the art itself was spooky and strange, which was perfect, perfect for this book. Um, the, the art style was perfect for this book. And it was one of the few books which could actually, not always, but it could actually be a little bit creepy now and then. This is tough for any comic book. It's particularly tough for a Marvel comic book. There's the leader of the vampire hunters, Quincy Harker, the son of Jonathan and Mina Harker from the novel. See, in this book, of course, the novel was real and was passed off as fiction. Uh, and you have a band of vampire hunters who are all after our man Dracula there. This was the most successful series that was based off a character who was evil. Basically, uh, the most successful series that was based off of a villain. Um, you've got a few different inkers in this, um, but, other, but most of the inking is pretty consistent. 
who does most of the inking in this? Uh, I think it's Tom Palmer. Was it Tom Palmer? I probably should have looked at that. But, uh, of course, one of the famous things about this is that it introduces Blade, the vampire hunter. Blade, who has become a very uh, popular character in his own right. This is uh, him back from the 1970s. Uh, and he has gone on to make movies. Tomb of Dracula never became a movie, but Blade made three movies and another one on the way. Popular character Blade, and he is a really good character. But back in the 70s, he was spending all his time trying to kill Dracula. And it was basically a long series of stories about all the different ways our vampire hunters was, were trying to kill Dracula and how Dracula is trying to kill them. Every once in a while, Dracula and the vampire hunters would team up if there was a menace even worse than Dracula. But usually, yeah, it was Dracula against the vampire hunters. And it was an interesting book. Um, Dracula is a hard guy to like because he's just so evil. But you do always, you are always interested in what Dracula is up to. What nefarious plot is Dracula up to now? And he does come off as arrogant, aloof, domineering, and yet he does have a human side to him. Uh, and he does just look great. Um, I love his character design. It's, it's unique. Uh, it was a good idea to base Dracula in this artistic version of Dracula after Jack Palance. Jack Palance actually did end up playing Dracula once in a film. Didn't look half as cool as this Dracula. Uh, Dracula, who's wearing a cape, which you can only get away with in the comic books, with the big thing going on behind him there. It's, you can get away with a lot in comic books. <laughs> you got a nice gothic woman running away from the house uh, picture there. All the old gothic, no gothic novels had the woman running away from the house. This one has a good a good reason because with Dracula looming over there. Um, yeah, it's Tom Palmer who's doing most of the inking in this, and you just get some fantastic work from Gene Colan. Moody, creepy, atmospheric, strange. Uh, when you read this comic, you really entered Dracula's world. There were, like I said, some giant sized issues uh, that were included. Um, Don Heck actually did a couple of them. And Don Heck, surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, did a pretty good job on him because he's pretty good at non-superhero stuff. And this is pretty non-superhero. Now, Dracula, in the Marvel Universe, did end up running into everybody, you know. But fortunately, usually that, were, that was uh, in other people's books. When it comes to horror characters, uh, it's kind of the kiss of death to have a superhero show up in your, in your horror character's book because it just, it wipes out the atmosphere and turns it into something else entirely. It's okay if you're reading a superhero comic and Dracula shows up. Somehow that works. But if you're reading a Dracula comic book and Spider-Man were to show up, that wouldn't work at all. Uh, but Dracula did exist in the Marvel Universe. Still does, I guess. And... You know, he had uh, some tussles with Doctor Strange that worked really well. Doctor Strange is a character that can, that can work well with Dracula. and uh, But he meant, like, the X-Men and Spider-Man and all those. You know, Dracula's busy. And he's such a great villain. And he's a great villain in this comic book. Um, Mark Wolfman came up with some interesting plots. And once he got going... Uh, after the first few issues that he did, he really started rolling. And this became just a terrifying, fun comic book. It wasn't really terrifying because it's a comic book. It's really hard to make a comic book scary. There are a couple that have done it. But it's, it has great mood, great atmosphere. The artwork is just incredible. And you know what? 
I really feel like the artwork just got better on this book. I mean, it started off good, and it just got better. I mean, and just look at creepy Jack Dracula there, um, and just the atmosphere, and the way everything's drawn. It's kind of like, it was kind of like the perfect horror comic book from the 70s, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Again, to read it, you might have to get it digitally. You can get, like I said, every issue digitally, and you could read it that way. Um, hopefully, they'll reprint this once someday. Uh, hopefully, they'll reprint the complete collection again so people can actually get it and pay a decent price. Now, at the same time that this book was out, they did a black and white comic book called Dracula Lives, and that lived for a few years. After this book finally was canceled uh, in 1979, there, there was another black and white series of magazines, comic book magazines that came out, also called Tomb of Dracula, that were pretty good. Uh, they lasted six issues, and so you got more artwork by Gene Colan. That was a fun series. Um, but like I said, it only lasted six issues. Uh, so this is the one. This is the, the full color comic series. This was the one. And that was the best. The one you definitely want to check out. Although the complete collections do have uh, some of those black and white stories in there as well. I think they're going to reprint all of them. Uh, hopefully. So yeah, there you go. Your Epic Comic Book Wednesday for today. The Tomb of Dracula. I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you next time. Uh, be sure to join me on Friday. I think I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be spinning the wheel to find out who won on the giveaway. So I will see you then. Don't know if I'll have anything up tomorrow or not, but you never know. Okay, guys, I will see you next time.